Hello, as you can see, we are once again in the Storytime Mobile for Storytime with Uncle Scotty, and I happen to be your host, Uncle Scotty. We have our own mugs. Hope if you do have your own mug, you're enjoying your own mug. If you don't have your own mug, I am enjoying my own mug for you because this mug is our mug and we all have our own mugs. Mmm. We're still in the Storytime Mobile, zipping around the world, telling stories everywhere, or maybe just in the same place. Who knows? But it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for joining us. Before we get started, I want to send a special thank you to one of our very, 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 very important viewers, Donna. Donna! Donna makes me so happy that you are enjoying Storytime. Donna is a friend of mine from a long, 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 long time ago. One of my very, very first friends in the whole world. She lives here in Los Angeles, along with me. And I get to see her sometimes often. Usually, remotely, these days. Sometimes, six feet away. But Donna, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying your mug. Donna sent me a picture of her enjoying her own mug, and it made me very, very happy. Thank you, Donna, for being a wonderful supporter. Also, thank you to Time, our lovely sponsor. No matter it's far away or up close, we always know what time means. We have been reading Pippi Longstocking. Last time we found out what happened when Pippi went to school. It didn't work out so well for the teacher. But Pippi got herself out of school, so she can now do as she pleases. Let's find out what that means. Chapter 5. Pippi sits on the gate and climbs a tree. Outside Villa Villa Coola sat Pippi, Tommy, and Annika. Pippi sat on one gate post, Annika on the other, and Tommy sat on the gate. It was a warm and beautiful day towards the end of August. A pear tree... I love pears. Pears are like a treat. They're better than a fruit. They're like a, it's like a rare treat, a pear. Mm. I had a pear tree in a yard in a house when I grew up, and it was fun. We had a pear tree and two pecan trees and a fig tree. I would like any of those trees right now. I don't have any of those trees in my house. Do you have any trees in your house? Any trees in your yard that bear fruit? It's fun. You can make preserves, desserts, have a snack just by going outside. Okay, sorry, back to the story. Psh, 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 psh. A pear tree that grew so close to the fence stretched its branches so low down so low down that the children could sit and pick the best little red gold pears without any trouble at all. That's what I'm talking about. They munched and ate and spit pear cores out onto the road. Villa Villa Coola stood just at the edge of the little town, where the street turned into a country road. Country road, take me home. Okay, focusing. The people in the little town loved to go walking out Villa Villa Coola way, for the country out there was so beautiful. As the children were sitting there eating pears, Single pairs, not two pairs, because two pairs would be pairs of pairs. Just single pairs, I think. As the children were sitting there eating pears, a girl came walking along the road from town. When the children saw, when she saw the children, she stopped and asked, Have you seen my papa go by? Mm-hmm, said Pippi. How did he look? Did he have blue eyes? Yes, said the girl. Medium large, not too tall, not too short? Yes said the girl. Black hat and black shoes? Yes, exactly, the girl said eagerly. No, that one we haven't seen, Pippi said decidedly. The girl looked crestfallen, heartbroken, and went off without a word. Wait a minute, shrieked Pippi after her. Was he bald-headed? No, he certainly was not, said the girl crossly. Lucky for him, said Pippi and spit out a pear core. The girl hurried away, but then Pippi shouted, Did he have big ears that reached all the way down to his shoulders? No, said the girl, and turned and came running back in amazement. You don't mean to say that you have seen a man walk by with such big ears? I have never seen anyone who walks with his ears, said Pippi. All the people I know walk with their feet. Oh, don't be silly. I mean, have you really seen a man who has such big ears? No, said Pippi. There isn't anybody with such big ears. It would be ridiculous. How would they look? It is impossible to have such big ears. At least not in this country. 
she added after a thoughtful pause. Of course, in China, it's a little different. I saw once a Chinese in Shanghai. His ears were so big that he could use them for a cape. When it rained, he just crawled in under his ears and was warm and as snug as you please. Of course, his ears didn't have it so good. If it was very bad weather, he used to invite his friends to camp under his ears. There they sat and sang sad songs while the rain poured down. They liked him a lot because of his ears. His name was Hai Shang. You should have seen Hai Shang run to work in the morning. He always came dashing in at the last minute because he loved to sleep late. And you can't imagine how funny he looked, rushing in with his ears flying behind him like two golden sails. The girl had stopped and stood open-mouthed listening to Pippi. And Tommy and Annika forgot to eat any more pears. And they were so utterly absorbed in the story. He had more children than he could count, and the littlest one was named Peter, said Pippi. Oh, but a Chinese baby can't be called Peter, interrupted Tommy. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> I'm very excited to see that's just, what, that's just what his wife said to him. A Chinese baby can't be called Peter. But Hai Shang was dreadfully stubborn, and he said that the baby should be called Peter or nothing. And then he sat down in a corner and pulled his ears over his head and howled. And then his poor wife had to give and then his poor wife had to give in, of course, and the kid was called Peter. Really, said Annika. It was the hatefulest kid in all Shanghai, continued Pippi. Fussy about his food, so that his mother was most unhappy. You know, of course, that they eat swallows' nests in China. Bird's nests. It's true. They do a bird's nest. Bird's nest soup. And there he sat with his mother, with his whole plate full of swallows' nests, trying to feed him. Now, little Peter, she said, come, we'll eat a swallow's nest for daddy. But Peter just shut his mouth tight and shook his head. At last, Hai Shang was so angry that he said no new food should be prepared for Peter until he had eaten a swallow's nest for daddy. And when Hai Shang had said something, that was that. The same swallow's nest rode in and out of the kitchen from May until October. On the 14th of July, his mother begged to be allowed to give Peter a couple of meatballs, but Hai Shang said no. Nonsense, said the girl on the road. Yes, that's just what Hai Shang said, continued Pippi. Nonsense, he said. It's perfectly plain that the child can eat the swallow's nest if he'll only stop being so stubborn. But Peter kept his mouth sh shut tight from May to October. Okay, that's five months. So, just going to break this down for a minute. Hai Shang and his wife have a child named Peter. Peter is very stubborn, doesn't want to eat. They have a bird's nest for him to eat, a swallow's nest. Peter doesn't want to eat it. They keep bringing it from the kitchen to the plate, kitchen to the plate, kitchen to the plate. Peter's like, nope, 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 nope. For five months, I'm not going to eat any food. None of the swallow's nest's business. But how could he live? Asked Tommy, astonished. He couldn't live, said Pippi. He died of plain, common, ordinary pig-headedness. The 18th of October, and he was buried the 19th. And on the 20th, a swallow flew in through the window and laid an egg in the nest which was standing on the table. So it came in handy after all. No harm done, said Pippi happily. Then she looked thoughtfully at the bewildered girl who stood, who still stood in the road. So that story, I think, is over. So Peter died because he didn't eat, but then the, he didn't eat the swallow's nest, and the swallow's nest ended up being a place for the bird to give birth to a new baby, which is kind of exciting. Also, one observation. Two observations. Real quick. Quick time out. Um, Hai Shang lives in Shanghai. Pippi, good storyteller. Also... Uh, anybody can go be called Peter, no matter where you're from. If you're from China or America or Germany or Turkey or Uzbekistan or Chad, you can be called Peter. Tommy. Okay, back to the story. Why do you look so funny? Asked Pippi. What's the matter? You don't really think I'm sitting here telling lies, do you? Just tell me if you do, said Pippi threateningly and rolled up her sleeves. Oh no indeed, said the girl terrified. I, I don't really mean that you're lying, but... No, said Pippi. But it's just what I'm doing. I'm lying so my tongue is turning black. Do you really think that a child could live without food from May to October? To be sure, I know that they can get along with food for three or four months all right, but from May to October, it's just foolish to think that. 
You must know that's a lie. You mustn't let people fool you so easily. Then the girl left without turning around again. People will believe anything, said Pippi to Tommy and Annika. From May to October? That's ridiculous. Then she called after the girl. No, we haven't seen your papa. We haven't seen a single bald-headed person all day. But yesterday, 17 of them went by, arm in arm. Pippi's garden was really lovely. You couldn't say that it was well kept, but there were wonderful grass plots that were never cut, old rose bushes that were full of white and yellow and pink roses, perhaps not such fine roses, but oh, how sweet they smelled. A good many fruit trees grew there too. Mm. And best of all, several ancient oaks and elms that were excellent for climbing. The trees in Tommy and Annika's garden were not very good for climbing. And besides, their mother was always so afraid that they would fall and get hurt that, she had never, that they had never climbed very much. But now Pippi said, suppose we climb up in the big oak tree. Tommy jumped down from the gate at once, delighted with the suggestion. Annika was a little hesitant, but when she saw that the trunk had nubby, nubbly places to climb on, nubbly places to climb on, she too thought it would be fun to try. A few feet above the ground, the oak divided into two branches, and right there was a place just like a little room. Before long, all three children were sitting over there. Over their heads, the oak spread out its crown like a great green roof. We could drink coffee here, said Pippi. I'll skip in and make a little. Tommy and Annika clapped their hands and shouted, Bravo! It's interesting that these nine-year-olds are just drinking coffee, just hanging out outside. Teach their own, I suppose. In a little while, Pippi had the coffee ready. That doesn't mean that you should drink coffee. I don't know if you really need it. I don't know if they really need it. Maybe they mean tea. Maybe, they're, maybe when they say coffee in this book, they mean tea. That's actually what I think it is. I think it's a translation thing. But we'll say coffee because that's what it says. Decaf. In a little while, Pippi had the coffee ready. She had made the buns the day before. She came in and stood under the oak and began to toss up coffee cups. Tommy and Annika caught them. Only sometimes it was the oak who caught them, and so two cups were broken. Pippi ran in to get new ones. Next, it was the buns' turn, and for a while the air was full of flying buns. At least they didn't break. At last, Pippi climbed up with a coffee pot in one hand. She had cream in a little bottle in her pocket and sugar in a little box. That's cool, so they climbed up into the tree where there's like a little, like, branches that they could sit on, and it felt like a little room, and they're up there having a little tea party. Tommy and Annika thought coffee had never tasted so good before. They were not allowed to drink it every day, only when they were at a party. And now they were at a party. Annika spilled a little coffee in her lap. First it was warm and wet, and then it was cold and wet. When they had finished, Pippi threw the cups down on the grass. I want to see how strong the china they make these days is, she said. Strangely enough, one cup and three saucers held together, and only the spout of the coffee pot broke off. Presently, Pippi decided to climb a little higher. Can you beat this? She cried suddenly. The tree is hollow. There in the trunk was a big hole, which the leaves had hidden from the children's sight. Oh, may I climb up and look too? Called Tommy, but there was no answer. Pippi, where are you? He cried, worried. Then they heard Pippi's voice, not from above, but way down below. It sounded as if it came from under the ground. I'm inside the tree. It is hollow and clear down to the ground. If I take out through a little crack, I can see the coffee pot outside the grass. Oh, how will you get up again? cried Annika. I'm never coming up, said Pippi. I'm going to stay here until I retire and get a pension. And you'll have to throw my food down through the hole up there five or six times a day. Annika began to cry. Why be sorry? Why be sorry? Why complain? Said Pippi. You come down here too, and then we can pray that we are pining away in a dungeon. Pining away in a dungeon. Never in this world, said Annika. And to be on the safe side, she climbed right down out of the tree. Annika! I can see you through this crack, cried Pippi, cried Pippi. Don't step on the coffee pot. It's an old, well-mannered coffee pot that never did anyone any harm. 
It can't help it that it doesn't have a spout any longer. Annika went up to the tree trunk, and through the little crack she saw the very tip of Pippi's finger. The tip of Pippi's finger. This comforted her a good great deal, but she was still worried. Pippi? Pippi, can't you really get up? She asked. Pippi's finger disappeared, and in less than a minute her face popped out of the hole in the tree. Maybe if, maybe I can if I try very hard, she said, and parted the foliage, the leaves, with her hands. If it's that easy, if it's easy as all that to get up, said Tommy, who was still up in the tree, then I want to come down and pine away a little too. Wait, said Pippi, I think we'll get a ladder. She crawled out of the hole and hurried down the tree. Then she ran, af then she ran after a ladder, pushed it up the tree, and let it down into the hole. So the tree is hollow. Pippi's found out she can go down the hollow tree, like in the middle of the tree. And she can climb up and down, but she wants to make sure that Tommy and Anakin can climb up and down too. So she got a ladder to make it easier. Tommy was wild to go down. It was difficult to climb to the hole because it was so high up, but Tommy was brave. And he wasn't afraid to climb down into the, into the dark hollow in the trunk. Annika watched him disappear and wondered if she would ever see him again. She peeked in through the crack. Annika! cried Tommy's voice. You can't imagine how wonderful it is in here. You must come in too. It isn't the least bit dangerous when you have a ladder to climb on. If you only do it once, you'll never want to do anything else. Are you sure? asked Annika. Absolutely, said Tommy. With trembling legs, Annika climbed up in the tree again, and Pippi helped her with the last hard bit. She drew back a little when she saw how dark it was in the tree trunk, but Pippi held her hand and kept encouraging her. Don't be scared, Annika, she heard Tommy say from down below. No, I can see your legs, and I can certainly catch you if you fall. But Annika didn't fall. She reached Tommy safely, and a moment later, Pippi followed. Isn't it grand here? asked Tommy. And Annika had to admit that it was. It certainly wasn't nearly as dark as she had thought, because light came in through the crack. That's how it gets in. She peeked through and announced that she too could see the coffee pot outside the grass. We'll have this for our secret hiding place, said Tommy. Nobody will know that we're here. And if they should come and hunt around outside for us, we can see them through the crack and we'll have a good laugh. We can have a little stick and poke it out through the crack and tickle them. And then they'll think this place is haunted, said Pippi. At this idea, the children were so delighted that they hugged each other, all three. Then they heard the ding dong, ding dong. They meant the bell was ringing for dinner at Tommy and Annika's house. Oh, bother, said Tommy. Now we've got to go home. But we'll come over for tomorrow. We'll come over tomorrow as soon as we get back from school. Do that, said Pippi. And so they climbed up the ladder. First Pippi, then Annika, then Tommy, last. And then they climbed down out of the tree. First Pippi, then Annika, and Tommy, last. And we'll find out what happens tomorrow, tomorrow, on Storytime with Uncle Scotty. Thank you so much for watching us live from the Storytime Mobile. We have our own mugs. So happy that all of you are receiving your own mugs. Please send photos. Please send questions. We haven't had a question in a long time. I'm curious what kind of questions you would like answered. So please let me know. Thank you for checking us out. Liking, subscribing. All those things mean so much. And I will see you tomorrow, a.k.a. next time on Storytime with Uncle Scotty. Bye.